This is a copper knife. It is based upon one found in the grave of a man who sometimes referred to as the King of Stonehenge, but is generally more refer usually referred to as the Amesbury Archer. He died 2300 BC, so this is essentially a 4300 year old knife. But it's not, it's a very modern one. And it actually wasn't very difficult to make. This bit of wood I found in the woods. I think it's a piece of pine. This piece of copper I found online. And it was all done with hand tools. Cut this out. Hand to, uh, it's got a stick tang. They had there were different sorts of tangs with these knives. There was no sort of one single pattern, let's put it like that. Some of them had a sort of tang that came down here, and I think would have been the, the handle would have been bound, or would have been bound together, slit down here, shove it in, tie it up. This one's got a stick tang. Some of them had a, a, a quite big sort of pointy tang like that. This one hasn't because I made it. And the hardest part, frankly, or the oddest part, as you'll notice, is this bevel around the edge here that had to be beaten with that ball pane hammer. Not accurate, they would have used a stone, of course. Um, so you have to kind of try and beat an edge onto it. And it's not as easy as I thought it was going to be. It took a lot longer, although the whole thing only took, frankly, a, a day to make and was pretty good fun. And I've seen these on Etsy. Someone was trying to flog them for about 100 quid. <sighs> no chance. The, 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 the copper plate cost about £3. Anyway, that's it. So the King of Stonehenge, Amesbury Archer, um, was part of the Beaker people. There are an interesting group of people who came about roughly 2800 to 1800 BC. Not a great deal known about them, um, apart from the name which came from the urns were frequently buried within the graves. The main impact on something like this, uh, mm, well, you meet Uggenys, mate, they're using stone tools. You've got a shiny, shiny, look at all shiny, 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 how oh, yes. You've also got massive improvements in technology. Someone has now worked out that there is metal in the ground and you can pull it out and you can smelt it, which would almost have been magic in those days. Now, this is a period right at the beginning of the European Bronze Age, but it is right at the beginning. And right at the beginning, they use copper. Copper's, you know, it's, it's fairly soft, really. Um, a knife like this, I think it's probably more sort of... <sighs> I honestly think they're a bit showing off, hence the um, attempt at decoration that I did that's not actually very good, but there we go, I tried it. And it actually follows patterns from other ones I've seen. Then they, they weren't, you know, there was, this wasn't made in a machine shop. This was made in a bloke in a cave with a, with a rock and fire. And that's largely all there is to say about it. You can imagine the impact it would have had somebody turning up with something like this when you're still using to stone. Yeah, we've gone into the magic of metal making. Now let's see, is it actually very sharp? Well, for once, uh, there's me to blame. If it isn't, because um, I made it. And what you have to try and do is hammer an edge onto it. And it's not as easy as I thought it was, as I found out. Let's have a go. Not in the conventional knife testing sense, no, it isn't. However, against a tomato, it actually works surprisingly well. Let's see if we can slice this up yeah there you go sort of works now knives at this time yeah there we go other edge were very much more tools than weapons um generally you would have carried an axe uh, if you were rich you'd have had an, uh, a sword that's not a slice of that um and your, your knife would have been an absolute last ditch thing it was much more of a tool um, skinning, things like that, cutting, chopping stuff. It probably wasn't a fighting weapon unless you were really, really down in your luck or you'd have had a bow with some arrows. Anyway, that is my take on the Amesbury Archer's copper knife. Took a day to make. Enjoyed making it as well. This is now very, very rare. Obviously, there, there are commercially available copper kitchen knives. Apparently, they're absolute rubbish. Remember all the tests I've said? They look fantastic. Just doesn't really hold an edge very well. It's not the problems with copper. Um, yeah, not many people in the world have got one of these. I'm one of them. And if you've got a spare day, um, you can be as well. But yeah, I like these. I like this. I like this very much. I made it. We can see the handle has a degree of shaping to it. The, the Not much of this stuff 
wood or any kind of organic matter really survives. These are sort of impressions and really best learned guesses as to what it would have looked, the handle would actually look like. I like it though. Um, yeah, it's, it's actually reasonably comfortable to hold on to. Yeah, that's my knife.